Welcome to episode 2 of the series, How to Solder a Patch Bay, where we'll be looking at soldering a top jack to a bottom jack and normaling them. So, to begin, here's an image of all the tools and accessories you'll need to complete this task efficiently. Cool, so now you have the tools. Before you do any soldering, it's good practice to lay out all your jack end labels, like such. Don't make the same mistake I made though and assume that Sharpie ink dries on duct tape. It doesn't. Instead you need a paint pen, like this one. Don't use masking tape either, it'll eventually curl off the jack. Alright, so now all the labels are done, it's time to start unscrewing the jacks from the patch bay. I recommend starting from the far right and moving left, and removing the jacks in pairs of top and bottom. Also, always take the next set of jacks out before you replace the completed ones, this way you'll have more space to put them back in. It's also worth noting that the cable management process laid out in the next video requires a large amount of space. So, if you've got a new patch bay, your jacks will look something like this. I recommend dealing with one jack at a time. Strip the insulation off your shielded wire to reveal the hot, cold and ground wires, and then strip the insulation off your hot and cold wires. In this video, I'm demonstrating that it's important to thread your hot and cold wires through the holes in the terminals and then wrap them around their terminals. This way, if there's any tension on the wire, the solder won't break due to the strength of the connection. Also, doing it this way means the wires hold themselves in place, which makes for an easy soldering job. As demonstrated here, the ground does not necessarily need to be threaded through as long as you flatten it on top of the jack properly. The hot and cold wires are already holding the tension for all three wires. So, when you've soldered those three wires, chop yourself a pair of normaling wires. I advise at least 4cm long to maintain manoeuvrability. Strip the ends of the normals like so, and tin them properly. When tinning wires, always tin the tip of the soldering iron first, because it allows for a smoother flow of solder. Now tin the normal terminals on the jack. When you've done this, you can heat up the solder from the top of the terminal and when it's liquid, thread the tin normal wire through the hole. Then, quickly flatten the wire on top of the terminal with the soldering iron whilst pushing up slightly on the wire. Remember, if when you flatten the wire it bends in the wrong direction, you can quickly correct this by twisting the wire slightly. And by all means, wrap every wire should you prefer to but it won't improve the connection quality, only its tensile strength. Alright, now we've attached all the necessary connections to the first jack. Repeat the hot, cold and ground wire process for the second jack. When you've done that, attach both jacks to your grip like this. Then, all you have to do is tin the normal terminals on the second jack and attach your normal wires like you did with the first jack. I recommend attaching the hot or top normal wire first, as you'll need the underneath spaces on both jacks to thread the wire through. Now, just before I conclude this episode, I'd like to discuss the grounding for the patch bay. If you look at the back of your patch bay, all of the ground connections are at the top. The usual method for grounding in a patch bay is to link every single ground connection to a single output ground wire. This way, all the audio signals from your studio gear will be grounded to the same source preventing ground loops. A way to do this, as you can see in the image, is to thread a copper wire through all the ground terminals on each row of the patch bay and interlink them to each other to culminate in one output ground wire. In case you're wondering, I got my patch bay second hand with all the wires already connected, unbalanced as you can see. It interests me that the previous owner went to the trouble of interlinking all the ground connections when every single connection to the patch bay is unbalanced anyway. But yeah, that's our your normal connection for a top and bottom jack on a patch bay. As discussed in episode 1, half normaling is the same process, but you connect the normal wires to the hot and cold terminals on the top jack, sharing with the hot and cold wires, and then connect those to the normal hot and colds on the bottom jack. So yeah, thanks for listening guys. Episode 3 is going to be discussing cable management.